Alright, hello everyone. This is going to be a tutorial on how to set up Rojo for your Roblox development workflow. So, first three things you need to open are a studio, which you want to import to Rojo if you're doing that. You want visual code open, and you want the, uh, the Rojo plugin installed. So that's this one here. You want to have this one installed, and you want to go to the settings and make sure the five time series is set. So, in the user extensions, Rojo just set it to five times, and then you want the website open. So that's important because you will need the RBLX to Rojo, RBXLX to Rojo folders, and you want. Uh, to know what you're doing basically so if you also do want to uh, just get the direct link to the Rojo VS Code extension it's right here too so to begin what you want to do is uh, go back here so as you can see I've got one here but I don't need that you want to create a folder for your project so on the desktop here I'm going to actually let me open that one we'll need that in a minute let me make a new folder called uh, my Rojo project and it will be empty for the moment so let's say you want to import a game you want to get to the game you at least need one script otherwise it will error so I've just done that for my one script it's called counter script and if I go to save file as and you want to make sure it's xml place file now I've got no other ones here so we should not have a problem uh, you can save it in here if you want to, if you just want to have the place file in here. So you want to save that, and just minimize studio. So, down here now we have the test Roblo, Rojo RBXLX. You want to then get the uh, RBXLX to, uh, whatever it's called again you want to convert it to the project uh, format so under the guide so reference guide you can get the um, porting existing game to Rojo you want to go to that page and click that this dot point right here RB, RB XLX to Rojo so you, when you come to this page don't don't download there you want to scroll down and you want to find the releases link and then you want to click that and I'm using point one, oh, 0 0.1 point zero for this and you just need to look for the rbxlx2 rojo.exe you want to download that one and you want to move it into the same folder alright now drag that there and leave this web page open for a moment because we will need to go back to the reference and project format so minimize that and now we have these two left so you want to drag that one on top of uh, the Rojo file or you can double click Rojo and open it and select that file so if I just you got to click run for this so if you just find the project my Rojo project and click the RBXLX RBXLX you want to open that and then it'll ask you where you want to save it so it's taking me straight to my folder but you just want to put in the same folder and there we go you now have another folder so these items now you can put somewhere else uh, I'm just going to put a folder called storage here and I'm just going to move them in there and let me close this for the moment uh, skip Alright, so you want to drag these out, out here, and pretty much you just want to grab your scripts, so if you have more than one folder, you can just, oh actually if there's uh, more than one folder in here you can drag it out, and just delete that SRC in the default project JSON. The reason we're doing this is we're going to customize this a little bit differently, so my formatting way. So I will include this one in the description, but here's the default project JSON that I want you to use. And it looks like this. So you have your project name, you have place IDs, and all this, which you can ignore. 
Um, we'll do that in a moment, but for now, let's go back here. So, you can leave that there, you can delete that folder, and now we need to open it in Visual Code. So, if you grab my Rojo project and just drag it into Studio, it should reset uh, Studio and you'll get something like this. Now, if I just expand that, you can see we've got multiple things here. So you just want to ignore that storage folder and you just want to look at these ones. So what we need to do now is create a folder for every one of these. So uh, we've already got service script service, but we need one for each other folder. So we need replicated storage. We need uh, starter GUI. We need server, wait, we got that one. We need starter pack. Uh, we need starter player. We need starter character scripts. We need starter player scripts. We need replicate first. And we need server storage. And we need workspace. And I believe that should be everything. Do make sure you spell them right. So just check over them. Alright. Um, did I do server storage right? I did. Okay. Okay, yeah. So now what we want to do is... Uh, oh, actually, before that. If you have any other services that you want to add to your directory here... Copy one of these. So, for example, the test service. You want to copy one of them. It will underline like that. You want to name it what the service is. You want to make sure the class name is the same. And then you want to make the path the same. Now, keep this one here so it doesn't delete anything inside it. And now you just want to make a um, folder here called test service. And then anything that goes in here will be inside the test service. But that's up to you if you want to add that. Alright, so next, uh, you want to add the place ID up here. So this is important. This makes it so it doesn't overwrite other projects uh, when you open up different places. So if I go back to uh, mine over here, if I go create, if I go group games, spooks vault, I have my test rojo game here. You want to open that. Or actually, yeah, you want to make sure the studio is open. Oh god, is this gonna... Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> you want to make sure the studio is open and you want to go to the start place. So just click on start place and you want to grab this ID. So you want to place your ID in there. Uh, zero just means offline mode. So if you're going offline, just put the zero in there. Otherwise, just keep the numbers in there. And then you want to name the project something. So I'm going to call this Test Rojo. Actually, I think that should be my Rojo projects. Oh, whatever. You can do something like that. And then you just want to make sure there's no other mistakes around. Yep. So there should be no underlying red or anything. And that's ready. So... Uh... What we can do now is, uh, where's Studio? You want to, so I don't know if you install the plugin manually or not, but there is an option to make the plugin do it for you, a uh, visual code plugin to do it for you. So if you go extensions under settings and look for Rojo configuration, there should be one for plugin, actually it might be, so control shift p to open up the menu here uh rojo show welcome screen so you want this one and then you want to click manage it for me so when you do that it will change its settings and it will be doing it for you i believe you do have to uh, restart visual code for it to take effect though yeah okay so next we want to go to studio 
you should see this Rojo one up here. You want to make sure that um it's there. If it isn't there, just reset studio and double check the visual code thing. Uh, otherwise, go download the plugin manually. I'm using the 0.5.4 version here, which is in two spots, but yeah. Next, we want to start the Rojo in visual code. So there's two ways you can do it. The start Rojo down here, or control shift P and then Rojo start server. And then it will say Rojo listening server port. If there's an error, so if I simulate an error here, so let me stop Rojo. So let's say I put a comma there by mistake, and then I start the server. It will tell you that there's an error. So trailing comma in the default project JSON. So we go 48. Actually, we say 49 because it's back one, but yeah. Just delete that, and then it'll listen again. So now if we go to Studio, we connect. You can see that the counter script has appeared. Now, when you're editing scripts, you don't want to do it in the studio. So pretty much you can just chuck this to the side. So this is how I currently am doing it. So you have studio there, and then you have visual code taking most of the screen up. So now let's, for example, go and change the script. So let's say I want it to print done on the end. When you control S to save it, It'll tell Studio to update it. So now if we go back in here, you can see that done's there. Uh, if you want to add your own objects using the default project JSON, there is a way to do it, but it gets very annoying uh, if you're doing like models or something like that. So try avoid it if you can. However, if we do have a look here, I no, I removed it. If we have a look at the notepad, which I have over here, you can see that I have a remote event class and a remote function class. So we're going to make two remote events in replica storage. That's the goal of this, just to show you. So if we look for replica storage, it's right here. And then what you want to do is you want to add a comma and then this is the name of the object. So name of object. You want to add that colon there. And then you want the squiggly brackets. Or curly brackets and then uh, you want to add in hashtag class name so that's there and then you want it to be a remote function or part or whatever you want but uh, mine's remote function I'm just gonna keep that there so I'm just gonna call this remote function actually test remote function uh, there's a class name and if you want to change the properties you can add a uh, comma oh, dollar sign at properties and then you can do name something like that oh, I think it's actually um, yeah like that so I believe you can do something like that too I'm not completely sure uh, actually we can test it, so, uh, that should now create a remote function replica storage, so if we go here, you will have to disconnect, oh, actually it told me an error, where is it, a path or class name, oh, uh, we'll just try it again, okay, there we go, so, you have to reconnect for it to update, but if you do, you'll see the remote function there, now, the properties didn't work because the name's up here, of course. However, if we um, create a part, for example. Actually, I think it's still going to override the name, but we can change the properties. So, class name is equal to part, and the properties. Let's say we want to change the position. You would need a list for this, so you need these square brackets. Uh, you want to change the x... Oh god, I forgot how to do this one. There, there should be a base plate down at the bottom of the uh, normal file. Uh, which you should be able to look at. Well, unless I was just doing it wrong in the first place. One, two, three. Oh wait, comma here. Yeah, that comma there. So I believe that should be X, Y, Z. 
And then if we just connect again, there, there we go. And then positions one, two, three. God, that was fantastic. And there's a yeah, so it does take effect. Um, all right, so that's how you add stuff like that. Now, let's say you want to bring in a script from your files. There is one way to do it, which is, well, actually, there is one way to do it, which is really easy. And that's just to grab the script. So if I just, like, for example, this lightning bolt. Let's say I grab this and I want to add it to the replicator storage. You just go in there and paste it. And then if we have a look now, we can see the lightning bolt. Now, do notice that it's a module. So there's some naming things you do have to worry about. So when you're naming your scripts, you can see this one has .server, .lua. So that makes it a server script. If you want a local script, it has to be .client.lua. So if I do an example here, new file, uh, print test.client.lua. Uh, and then I just do like print works. If we have a look in the start of GUI, it's a local script. And if we just look in the replicator storage, we have the lightning bolt.lua. And that makes it a module. So if we change this format here to server.lua, it will change to a server script, which is perfect. Or oh, actually, it's not perfect. Um, it has to be in the hold on, because it has to be in the server script service to actually work. So you can actually just drag stuff over like this, or you can go into your files and do it manually if you want to do want to do it that way. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not much else, else, else to add. Okay, that should be a, that should be a module because it's returning a, the function. But yeah, hopefully this helped to set up Rojo locally. Uh, I may not do a Git video because I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, but yeah, this is pretty much how you set this one up. Thanks for watching.